All right, man, today, today I got a story to tell. So right now we've been talking about living testimonies and we're inside the Love Deposit studio. Man, I have none other than a Dallas rap legend in the building. Some of y'all know him as Stebo. Some of you know him as Malachi. But man, he here and he gonna take us through that, man. How you doing? What's going down, my nigga? Already. What's going already. down, man? So in this interview, man, we gonna actually run through uh, the history, some history about the town. And we gonna understand and really get to know about the town through the lens of Malachi. So for those that don't know you, tell us what part of town you grew up in and where the story began. Well, I come up over off uh, 52nd and Leadbetter. Stayed in Robin Village Apartments. And uh, the game really started like back in 84 with a group called the Star Study Strutters. It was a pop locking group, right? So tell me this, tell me this. What part of town is that considered 52nd? Uh, you know, with Harry Stone, Zoom, Wild Whitney Young, that back street is 52nd Street right there, all the way back that way. Ledbetter is Robin Village, Ledbetter Village, Prince Hall, Robin Oaks, Carry Arm, those were the name of them back in the day, you know, of course, the name's different now. Yeah, and saying? so yeah. what part of town is that? That's in Oak Cliff. Oak Cliff, okay. Oak Cliff, okay. where Sweet Georgia Brown is right okay. now, right there. Sweet Georgia Brown used to be Burger King back in the okay. day. But in the day, anyway, uh, the Star Study Struggles, man, they was the first cast to come out of Dallas representing hip-hop. They came out with a song called Nick Work. It was this cat named Major Harris, Train, Ebony, Levert, and DJ Ushay. He was the first DJ with the hip hop game in Dallas. So they put out a song called Nick Work, and it was a pop blocking group. And uh, I used to watch him, because Major lived right next door to me. So I used to watch them outside practicing their routine two o'clock in the morning. They out there doing their little, you know what I'm saying? They had clean little, nice little routine with the with the with the rap game and the, the breaking or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So they put that song out right there and it blew up in D Town, like I say, because it was the first song that would come out that represent the rap game. Okay. After that kind of took off, the box heads emerged. It was these two cats, one named Gerald Griffin, rest in peace of Gerald, and uh, his partner named Little Ant. And it was called a box is because their hair style was made like, you know, like kid that play, kid her, but it was straightened with the relaxer, so it was like a straight point, like a bow. And Gerald Griffin, he was like 6'1". And I mean, this nigga was cold with that pop like and shit. Them niggas in Breaking and B Street, they couldn't, they couldn't really fuck with this nigga here, okay. you know what I'm saying, because he was from D-Town. They, they didn't let him get down in the movie because I heard he tried out for it. Oh, so, so, so this guy was so good that he almost made it in an yeah, a, yeah, a authentic was, movie, Breaking yeah, yeah, and Breaking Beach Street. Breaking and Beach Street, yeah. Yeah, he was going to be a uh, Shabadoo in uh, Breaking. He was going to have a Shabadoo role in uh, yeah, Turbo and Ozone. Yeah, that's how cold he was with it. But like I say, they, they came with the popping and the breaking thing and this, that song, Network, you know, like, like I said, it was a big song, so. After that right there, it kind of shifted a little bit with the rapping, which led to Nemesis, Ron C, the DOC era. You know what I'm saying? When the breaking kind of faded out a little bit, the rap game became more bigger. Okay. Okay, so let me, I'm going to stop you because we're going to walk down through that. We're going to walk down through that sl slowly. Yeah, yeah. So then we share a little bit of history. Now, I was a little younger, but... We both lived in some apartments by the name of Robin Village at one point. Yeah. So so walk us through what the city was like. I mean, from shamrocks to city lights, I mean, to crest, I mean, theaters. Just walk us through it all. Well, the first club that was like rap club, man, it was called Stars. That's where DJ Ushay used to DJ it. And the Star Study Strutters, you know, that's where they hung out at. They had another club, it was in Keys Bazaar, it was called Second Stage. This club here was the uh, uh, competition thing. As a matter of fact, I remember Jerry 
he was supposed to have a little old battle with this other cat named Sid. He was cold too, the pop like the shit, and he had the box head. You know what I'm saying? He was like Gerald, biggest rival. They were gonna have a battle at second stage one night. The loser had to cut his shit off. You know what I'm saying? They were gonna they were cutting niggas hair off that night. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what happened, but somewhere along the line they say the Clippers got lost. The nigga, <laughs> the nigga who had the Clippers supposed to do the cutting, he didn't disappear somewhere. So you know. But uh, with the rap game, like I said, with the DOC, the DOC used to be with Dr. Rock back in the day, but they had some kind of business uh, misunderstanding. That's how DOC ended up with Dr. Dre, you know what I'm saying? He was part of the Feel of Fresh crew with Dr. Rock in Dallas, you know what I'm saying? But once he hooked up with Dr. Dre, then, you know, boom. But uh, the city was, it was, it was nice then, cause niggas was real celebrities back then, bro. Like Major, he lived right next door to me, but you hardly ever seen this dude. And when he did come out, like the word to go around the apartment, Major outside, motherfuckers would come around there just to see him for a few minutes. He'd get sometimes he'd come out there and do his little old pop thing. Then nigga gone, you know what I'm saying? So they were like real celebrities, cause they was on TV with this shit. The box heads, they was on TV back in the day in a major contest. I believe it came on Channel 21. It was like a nationwide thing they oh, had. wow. Yeah, yeah, and they, this shit ought to be documented because I said it was on TV, so somebody ought to be able to get their hands on it. You know what I'm saying? But uh, anyway, niggas had their own little, uh, everybody had their own little style back then. King Arthur had his own little style. You know what I'm saying? The boxers had their style. Everybody had their own little, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So at one point, you start rapping. Yeah. So so tell us tell us how that began. That began with the breaking thing. Like I said, the breaking started to fade out and the rap came into it real strong. So when Run DMC hit in Dallas, you know what I'm saying? That was it. That's all we needed to see. I got down with my nigga from Robin Village, you know what I'm saying? Charles Lewis, aka Pete from the street. You know what I'm saying? Me and him had our little thing. My my signature move was the knee spin. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, when I used to break dance, I had that knee spin down. Couldn't nigga come fuck with me. I had my nigga one day. I was just saying, my nigga, how I be licking when I be doing that shit? That nigga said, bro, you can't see nothing but the colors you got on. You be going so goddamn fast and that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, me and my nigga, we hooked up in the music game, and it was a whole lot of niggas in Robin Village, like, uh, 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 you know who. They came out with the song, okay. My Boy and my Ho. Boy they and come Ho. up by Robin Village, they're my niggas, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a whole lot of niggas come up by Robin Village that niggas don't really know about. But uh, that's how I got into it, you know what I'm saying? And and uh, we built our own little old movie, me and my nigga. We had, I, I, I seen the track with 52nd Street. 52nd yeah. Street is where history's made. If you perpetrate Joe's life will fade. Uh, we had every nigga on 52nd Street. <laughs> yeah, every nigga on 52nd Street was rocking that right there, nigga, all the way from Robin Village, all the way down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, that was our shit right there, man. So that's how I pretty much got into the game right there, right there. So when I say creeping through the city like a wolf in the woods, they shot and ban QSP because we up to no good. What does that mean to you? <laughs> that mean you 254 feet deep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 254 feet deep in the underworld, nigga. That was the next level of the game right there. Me and Charles Lewis, we moved from Robin Village and moved to the way. And so we had to move, uh, get transferred from Sock. And Pete, he came from Spruce, but I came out of Sock. We had to go to Kimball because we was in the way now. So we get to uh, Kimball and we got a little old, you know what I'm saying? We like celebrities up there because we straight thugging up at Kimball. Everybody else playing football, basketball. We come up there with some new shit. They like, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> what these niggas doing over in the cave? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, and then we came over there and we hooked up with L.A. Player. You know what I'm saying? A.J. the Enforcer, Lyrical D., v -bo, you know what I'm saying? We created some more shit, you know what I'm saying? All right, all right, all right. And, and I think it's important to share these moments, man, because I watch these videos 
And when people talk about paying homage and, and all of this, man, it seems like they missed a whole generation. I mean, I think when they reach back to pay homage, I think, and no disrespect to these guys, but they go far back as DSR, and that's probably it. Every now and then somebody might yeah, go to yeah. Cottonmouth Jesse, but that's it. Yeah, you know, but well, like I said, I'm 53 years old, bro, so I've been around a long time. Man, a whole lot of niggas ain't around to tell a story like this right here. You know what I'm saying? I can say I was there witnessing the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? So... Hey, somebody got to tell the story of how it really got started. Like I said, we all got talent in Dallas. Talent ain't never been a problem, but cats don't know where the talent actually came from. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, they go back to the star study strutters. Y'all get that talent from them, bro, and just don't know it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's where it come from. No, I mean, that, and that's deep. And I and I like how, you know, I remember some of the music. I grew up to some of the music. Then I had an opportunity to do some of the music with you guys. And I'll tell you this, man. At one point, the city gets super violent. And obviously, crack area hit, things are going crazy. And Dallas goes to number one uh, in the United States as far as the crime rate goes. Yeah. Tell me about that time and what the city was like. What was the vibes? Well, I mean, even then, like I said, back then, yeah, niggas was getting killed, but they were getting killed for some little money, though. Like Anthony King, he was one of the biggest drug dealers back in the day. Little young nigga had big paper in South Dallas. You know what I'm saying? So he got killed in the game back in the day. And, but as I said, it was all about the paper then. Like now, the niggas just killing just to be killing. You know what I'm saying? Back then, it was about making them real lick. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get some real money. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, even though we was doing that shit back then, D-Town was still live. We were still on some live shit. They always have been on some 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 cool kicking and shit. You know what I'm saying? Keys Park. You know what I'm saying? Bogman Lake. You know what I'm saying? They always had, you know, all that other shit was going on. We always had something else popping. So, you know, it is what it is with that right there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Now, when I, you know, when I look back, at some point, uh, you... You travel a little bit to L.A., you travel a little back to Dallas, and you get a From claim. Dallas to L.A.? Yeah. I was going from Dallas to L.A. I went back in, went to L.A. back in 92. Okay. And I went out there, Charles and Mike talked about when he went out there when, when you can catch Uber. Wasn't no Uber back then, my nigga. You on that Metro bus dealing with these fools, and them niggas was heated out there when I was, yeah, they was heated when I was out there. Right before the Rodney King shit jumped off with the rides. You know what I'm saying? But, uh... L.A., man, is a whole different, that's a whole different world out there, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? I be trying to tell niggas, man, if you get five or six real-ass niggas to go to L.A., man, we'll come up out there, my nigga. That's how Big Shit Ignite did when he got six, seven niggas from the hood and uh, went to Hollywood and took some shit, took some millions. You know what I'm saying? But you got to come correct out there because they all roll deep. You know what I'm saying? So you talking about doing business with them, you got to come deep with them like that. You know what I'm saying? I remember I was downtown uh, in the business district in L.A., and, man, I've seen, like, six or seven essays. Man, they were walking up, and I'm talking about these were clean. They had on, they on suits, but they looked like some tailor-made-ass shit they had made. And, but they all looked like they was essays, like, street essays, like they fucking around in the streets, banging and shit. But they made it so goddamn clean, and they looked serious. I said, boy, them motherfuckers are finna get some serious-ass paper. You know what I'm saying? We don't ride like that down here in D-Town. You know what I mean? We don't. We all one nigga trying to get it on his own. That's one. Of, that's one of the curses of D Town right there. You know, I got a I got a jam called the Curse of D Town. I let my homeboy hear the night said, Steve O. I hate that motherfucker, but that bitch jamming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, like I said, that, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother ball game out there, man. But you, you know, you can go out there and check it out, and you stay to yourself, and you check them niggas out there. They gonna respect you. You go out there with that bullshit, they going to show you some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, yeah. I remember, man, you, you told a story many years ago, and I, I remember it slightly. But I think that, I don't know if it was your initial time there or after you spent some time there, somebody asked you where you were from. They still had me that today. <laughs> they still had me that. I had a nigga had me that not too long ago, about a week ago. And they said, me from L.A.? I said, no, nah, my nigga, I'm, I'm from Dallas, my nigga. I said, I lived in L.A., but I'm, you know, I'm from D-Town. Just like when I go out there, nigga, where you from, homie? I'm from Dallas, my nigga. Shit. All right, homie, give me a pass, gone by my business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm straight. 
born and raised in D-Town, but I've been to a whole lot of places, L.A., Miami, Atlanta, Vegas, you know what I'm saying? Shit, it's a I big world out there, yeah. yeah. It's a big world out there, man. So, yeah, I done been out there a lot. I seen a whole lot of now. I seen a whole lot of shit go down in LA that I ain't never seen before. Okay, I give them that right there. They didn't. They didn't show me some shit. I seen a lady man jump out the window of her apartment kind of far in Hollywood. Man, she jumped from the fourth floor and she landed on the gate with the barbed wire, you know, the, the spurs. Yeah, bam, hanging on it just like that. My stomach dropped. My nigga, I said it's time for me to go to the crib. I done seen too much. I caught the first great hand up out of it. <laughs> Straight back to detail. Oh, I seen a little bit too much now, please. Time to go. Oh my goodness. Yeah, man. Yeah. So when when they ask you, you know, when you're in LA and they ask you where you're from, they ain't really asking where you're from, right? They really asking like if you bang. But they yeah, that but they still wanna know where you're from. But yeah, they they ask you where you, Really, where you from, nigga? Yeah. What you claiming out here, nigga? You out here in L.A., what, you got to be claiming something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had a nigga walk up on me one night. I'm going minding my business. I walked by the cat. He was sitting in the car with two more dudes. I walked down the sidewalk. He said, my nigga, you want a drink? I said, no, nah, I'm good. I kept on walking. The nigga said, say, man, is you black? When he said that, I'm thinking the nigga trying to be fly or something. You know what I'm saying? So I turned around like, what you mean am I black, my nigga? That nigga said, uh... You sure you ain't no essay? I said, nah, my nigga ain't no essay. And they said, well, uh, I'm from 103rd Hoovers. When he told me that, I remember McKinfo told me, said, man, them essays, essays and the Hoovers, they be killing each other. They don't like each other out there. Uh -huh. So when the nigga said he from Hoovers, I said, oh, I'll see what he on now. I said, say, my nigga, I ain't no essay. I don't bang. I'm not even from out here, player. You ain't gonna get no strikes fucking with me. Got his nigga up and walked on off, you know what I'm saying? That's how I got to come with him. Just come to him like that, my nigga, you know what I'm saying? That's how I was here. Yeah. That's what that is. Yeah, they respect that. That's what that is. So, man, I got a question. Why has it been so difficult until now, until recent times, for rappers to come up from Dallas? Bad business. Bad business, my nigga. That shit that happened to Mo Three, niggas in the industry, that that's bad business. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Twisted Black, he just got his deal. Bam, get popped. Bad business. They don't want to do uh, business with niggas that you know will fuck shit up for them, fucking their money up like that. You know what I'm saying? And then niggas in detail want to do everything on their own. They want to be the nigga. You know what I'm saying? Instead of Mo Three. Trap Boy Freddy and Yellow Bees getting together, making them a whole little group together like Migos or some shit, and really put this bitch on the map. No, they got to go with some old, we beefing, we don't like each other. You know what I'm saying? Bam, so you see what happened. So, uh, yeah, niggas ain't going to come up like D and D town like that right there, man. It ain't, ain't going to happen. So, tell me this. So, in your dealings going back and forth, Dallas to LA, you somehow make contact with Death Row Records. Tell me about that. I sent a, uh, a demo to Suge Knight. Well, I sent to Death Row. I think uh, I think Suge was locked up then. That first time he got locked up. But um, he got out. I believe in like two thousand three, he got out. And uh, I was standing in LA with my old man. Right, my old man had came to Dallas. Brought all my mail back out there to me. And uh, I see the contract getting up from Big Suge Knight. He won't put me down. It's just a standard contract, but he let me know that he got the CD and they interested. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I get the contract. Later on that night, old man get killed coming out the gambling shack out there. Then he caught old man slipping. The whole shit went down the drain from there on out. I run into Suge Knight about a month later at the BET Awards. I pull him to the side as I say, Suge, uh, I got your contract, man, but my old man got killed the same day. He just looked at me, shook his head, and he said, man, just holler at me when you get your head straight. I said, all right, my nigga. And I think a few months later, he went back to jail for some more shit. You know what I'm saying? But that's what fucked that up right there, you know what I'm saying? Once that happened to the old man, then the whole operation. Cause old man, he was out there hustling. But once I got that contract, he was like, oh, okay, this nigga trying to do something. He finna put some money into me. That was to fuck the whole thing up. You know what I'm saying? Go, man, let me know earlier that day. Okay, you trying to do something. I got some money. We finna, you know what I'm saying? I say later on that night, 
Oh old man didn't come to the crib. That was it. Yeah, that was it. I said, well, goddamn, ain't meant for me to be fucking with Del Rowe, because it's too much <laughs> it's too much going on. I ain't had a chance to sign the contract yet. Niggas already dropping. So I just, yeah, I just left it alone after that. But uh, one thing about that, though, man, is uh, that let me know. If a nigga like Suge Knight was interested in fucking with my music, then that means somebody like Jay-Z might want to put a nigga on, or, you know what I'm saying? Anything. I got some kind of experience in the game. I ain't just no bullshit-ass nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I got that under my belt. You know what I'm saying? There's a um, there's a well-known manager in the city. Matter of fact, he does a lot of social media as well. I've heard him on one or two occasions say, man, these old-ass rappers need to sit their ass down. Um, he ain't going to say that to Jay-Z. He ain't going <laughs> to say that to Jay-Z, 53 too. I bet he won't say that to him. He's same age I am. You ain't gonna say that to Cube, nigga. Cube is same age I am, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, he just, yeah, he just whoever it is. I don't know who you talking about. I don't want to know who you talking about. Yeah, but whoever it is, you go tell Jay Z sit his old ass down somewhere, and then come back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, then come back with that. But music, my nigga, ain't no age limit to it. You feel me? If, when you come out, if you drop a CD tomorrow and motherfucker heard of you, you brand new. They don't know how old you is unless you tell them in your song how old you is. Other than that, they just hear another nigga rapping. So, yeah, all that dumb don't mean nothing. You know, you, you said something that was very epic right there. In most genres, you, you call it country, you call it rock, uh, you call it whatever you want to, jazz, blues. Their artists can age. Their yeah. artists can start young, and they can keep doing it until they can't do it anymore. Yeah. Why is it that there's a negative stigma on the music that we created? What you mean by the uh, rapping at a certain age? Yeah. Like I said, it come down to how much money you get off the rapping. You know what I'm saying? If, if you at that age, you rapping, but your money ain't matching up to it, then, hey, they going to look at you like, yeah, you might try something different. You know, but if your money matching, like I say, Jay Z and Kanye, shit, they got the most money in the game. They are same age, they same age we are. So you, uh, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, Devin, right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about, Devin, player. You know what I'm saying? I, last time I checked, as long as your money was right, they don't give a damn how you rapping. You can come to a market online center and sell that bitch out tomorrow night. 53-year-old ass nigga need to be home laid up somewhere. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I got to get back to a, to, a, to a rather serious topic. And, 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 and the manager was Rainwater, by the way. Uh, he was he was Mo3's manager. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, and he said it multiple times. So I just wanted to get your take on it. But, um, man, unfortunately, I hear you You suffered, you suffered a, a, quite a bit of loss. I mean, you talked about yeah. your father being killed coming out of the gambling check. You also... Yeah. Uh, in private, talked about your son being killed. Yeah. I mean, obviously crime happens. You know about Dallas. I mean, what what are your thoughts about the, the, the current conditions of the city and the violence and the killing? Well, uh, now there's a whole lot of more people down here from other places right now. And uh, they're bringing that bullshit where they coming from. They're bringing it down here with them. Uh, L.A. is the rat race. You know what I'm saying? That motherfucker, there are millions of people up in there. You're going to come across demons every day of the week. You step outside your door in L.A., oh, yeah, you're going to face some evil because there's so many people out there you can't hide. That's what Dallas going to be in a few more years because uh, everybody moving down here because the shit's so cheap and you can get away with a whole lot of shit down here too. So uh, it's bad now, but I think it's going to get a whole lot worse. This the good part of it right here, really, if you look at it. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, in the next few years, it's going to be way worse than it is right now. But I can't control certain things, man. Uh, people have to answer to God about the shit they do. And I stay out these niggas' way. And hopefully they'll stay out of my way. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So, I mean, you you put in some work. You you you, you rap with some notable people. Um, I've heard some of the music and have enjoyed a lot of the music. Um, man, what advice, if any, would you give to somebody that's aspiring to 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 get into rap music? Well, let me tell you like this right here, man. Uh, 
I used to go out there to LA for the BT Wars. I damn them with them every year. I just go out there, man, just to get that that uh feeling of it. You know what I'm saying? Be right in the mix with the people that's doing what you actually want to do. You got to at least be out there to see that shit happen. See, that's where a whole lot of people fuck up at. They don't go and see other shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but uh, that's what I tell niggas to do. Hey, man, get out. If you're trying to get out and do something, I told the cat one day he was at Big T, and he was trying to sell his little CD to people in the parking lot. And that nigga said, uh, <laughs> that nigga said, man, the next nigga tell me he ain't got five dollars and he driving the beans. I'm knocking his ass out. I, said, <laughs> <laughs> I told, I told him, I just say, my nigga, it ain't that serious, man. I said, say, if you that serious about it, Playboy, you need to go to motherfucking L.A. Cause they serious with it like that out there. You know what I'm saying? The motherfuckers, I would, they, they used to have these shows called Go Hard or Go Home, man. Them niggas be in there, I mean, going out because you got record executives, record executives and all that old kind of shit up in there, whatever. But, uh, and them niggas be up in there going, you know what I'm saying, going hard. I'm like, God damn, these niggas ain't playing it. <laughs> Let me call some back of them detail because these niggas in there going off like a motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, man, if you're if you really trying to do it, man, get out and see some more shit and find opportunities, man. That's what's up, man. So... I mean, of, of all of these songs, I, I, I know you got some favorites, and I know yeah. you might want to bless us with one or something. I don't know. But if you do, man, feel free to share, man, uh, uh, one, of your, one of your dope lyrics. Well, I got this uh, one track I call uh, You Can't Do What I Do. And uh, it goes, uh, now what I'm about to write is true, and yeah, it's brand new. You niggas can't do what I do, so I'm about to take flight. And you were afraid of heights. How you gonna reach your plight if your game ain't tight? No, I'm not a star, but I can hang like a cloud. And I'm just laying low while these niggas talking loud. Why you sitting at the trap with your life being bored? I'm out here chilling at the BET Awards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 Mike. I love it, man. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So, man, they, they, you know, we, we call you Malachi. Some of us call you Stebo. We mentioned yeah. that. And you talked about you went to SOP. So your name is synonymous with, with a whole bunch of other people that got a bow on their name. Where did that originate from? Uh, I really can't tell you now. I do remember one night they had a talent show at SOP. And uh, we started a ride up there. Me and my nigga got on stage, or a ride jumped off up his sock. So that probably where it come from right there, square business. I had a motherfucking chick next day at me for my autograph. You know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, we did it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that, that's probably where they came from, Flip. Yeah. Okay. So there's a story I want you to tap into yeah. uh, before we go, uh, and, and that is, a guy named King T came to town. King T, straight out of Compton. Doing a concert. Straight out of Compton. Tell me what happened. Man, King T. I think this was 87, 88, around that time. So, uh, yeah, King T and I believe it was Rodney O that was with him. And uh, Rodney O and uh, DJ Pooh was there that night. Yeah, so King T come on stage. He do his thing. You know, he get up there. And he feel like he gonna call some niggas out in D-Town. So uh, me and my nigga, we was chilling next to on stage next to him or whatever. And our partner started pointing it at us like, yeah, these niggas right here, they can go. So King T tells us, come on on stage and uh, show what you got. So me and my nigga get up there. They start playing some old bullshit that beat. Me and my nigga like, no, nah, we won't need no beat. We gonna acapella this motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, we go acapella on him. Uh, <laughs> King T get mad. He pulled out a big wad of money and started throwing it out in the, out in the crowd. My nigga Sambo, rest in peace of Sambo, he was like the hype man for us back in the day. Sambo go over, he take the mic from the nigga like, nigga, you got so much money in your pocket, nigga, you know what I'm saying? Get these nigga people out here some money. And when King T come out with the big, yeah, he come out with the wild, start throwing, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, they got mad. That was his brother no come out there and snatch the mic and shit like that. But, uh, the thing about that was later on that nigga DJ Pooh, that nigga was told me and my home was to say, man, y'all niggas can do something, man. Y'all got, you know what I'm saying? Y'all got some shit. You know what I'm saying? And that always stuck with who y'all know DJ Pooh, that's uh 
Red from Friday. From Friday. He wrote yeah, Friday. Yeah, yeah, Q, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's DJ Pooh right there. Yeah, nigga told us, say, man, y'all niggas got some shit. Y'all can do something. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we rocked the mic. We got down on them boys back in the day. <laughs> All yeah, right. Yeah. All right. We had another big hit, man. I used to love called Styling and Wild, and I think. And uh, it, it was really dope. And, and, you know, I listened to a lot of y'all soundtracks throughout my life. So, yeah, yeah. So, man, y'all really did it. I wanted to make sure I got an opportunity to pay homage and to let people know how it really, you know, went down and how it was going on in the cliff. Yeah. But man, yeah. you got you got anything you're working on, any products, anything that you're trying to plug right uh, now. right now, man, I'm working on this script. Actually, this uh movie by my son, how he got killed, but what it is, the nigga uh daddy is gonna find a way to get in jail, get close to the young nigga that killed his son. And he gonna befriend the nigga while he in jail, make the young nigga think everything good. He big homie. Then he gonna get re revenge on his son. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm writing that right there. And uh, I got a couple more little old projects I'm writing on. One of them is gonna be about how all these rappers getting killed, but niggas don't know it's a secret organization that's knocking these niggas off. You know what I'm saying? They've been hired to kill these rap niggas off. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, that's gonna be tight there too. It's gonna be like a different episode every week. These niggas steady getting killed. I said, well, that's the episode for Nipsey Hustle. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, that's, a, that's the episode for uh, Young Dog, you know what I'm saying? But that shit's so tight. My partner, he told me, so, boy, that, that shit, they're gonna be cold, nigga, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm working on them right there, man, to try to do some more shit. I might have to go to Hollywood. And, and you know what I'm saying? Say, I got it right here. You know what I'm saying? Or go yeah. to Atlanta, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. Somebody else told me that. They say, maybe I might need to holler at Tyler Perry because, you know what I'm saying? He, he the motherfucker that they, they can put you on with that right there. No, oh, that's dope, man. So, man, just lastly, man, any advice you want to give to these guys out here, man, serial killing and sliding on each other, man? Hey, man, they niggas ain't going to listen to what I'm talking about. They'll see this video of my nigga and go right around Coming, you know what I'm saying? So they ain't trying to hear that. I don't die and tell a nigga, hey, the white folk ain't playing with you, nigga. But they get their hands on your ass. And it ain't like it was back in our day. We can kill a nigga and murder go unsolved for decades. But now, like the young nigga that killed my son, they had this nigga on camera and the apartment's doing it. You know what I'm saying? Everything on camera now, my nigga. So when y'all out here killing these niggas, don't think nobody ain't seen your bitch ass. They got you on camera. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, now, nigga, y'all done do what you do, but uh, be ready for what's going to come along with that. The repercussions. Yeah. No, man, it's been live, man. I appreciate yeah, yeah, you, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, already, man. Like I got to say, I appreciate the time, bro. And uh, I see y'all got y'all thing going on down here, my nigga. Yeah, do what you got to do, player. Do what you got to do, my I appreciate nigga. it, man. Y'all already, man. Malachi, Steve-O, man. I sure appreciate him stepping in. Y'all already, man. Hey.